Hello, friends. This is Peter Herbeck. I hope you're at peace in Christ. I want to talk about some simple truths today about how to overcome a troubled heart, how to overcome a fearful heart. But before I do, I want to offer you once again my new booklet called Receiving Fire. It's free. and You can just get it at www.renewalministries.net slash RF free. And also a new book my wife and I just uh, wrote called Lessons in the School of Love, Cultivating a Christ-Centered Marriage. Our friends at Emmaus Road Publishing asked us to write it. Initially, I thought, no, I'm not an expert. I don't know if I write a book on that. But really what they wanted was for us simply to tell our story about uh, how we uh, built a family culture uh, centering on the Lord. And we try to write a very accessible book. It's not a very long book, but it's practical. And it's also transparent. We wanted to be honest about sort of what worked, what didn't work, and how the Lord helped us overcome our own weaknesses and the things we brought into our marriage and uh, his faithfulness. God is so faithful. You can get the book at Amazon or you can get it at renewalministries.net or at Emmaus Road Publishing. So overcoming a troubled heart. I've talked many times on this uh, YouTube, these YouTube videos about the Last Supper discourse in the Gospel of John and how beautiful, how powerful it is and how much the Lord uh, wants us to, how he's speaking to us directly through it. He's speaking primarily to the apostles, but his words apply directly to us. And if we take them to heart, they will have transforming power in our life to face any and all circumstances. Because of course, the Last Supper discourse, Jesus instituted the Eucharist there, but he also unfolded for the apostles the truth about what was going to happen in the days ahead, literally within 48 hours, what they were going to see and experience. Their whole world was going to get turned upside down. Their worst nightmare was going to happen. Jesus was going to be arrested. He's going to be crucified. And then Jesus said, and then here's how you're going to respond to it. So he shows them what was going to happen uh, and how they were going to react to the situation and how their heart, the, their hearts were going to be revealed. Their hearts were troubled. Their hearts were fearful. And they reacted out of fear. But he also told them, both in John and in Matthew and in Luke, the kind of life they were going to live and what they were going to experience, that they too were going to literally walk in the footsteps of Jesus. And as they bore witness to the truth, that they were going to be persecuted and ultimately they would die for him. And we know that 11 of the 12 apostles did, uh, were martyred. And Jesus, it's interesting how important uh, Jesus's words, or let me put it this way, how much he believed that the key for them was to hear him and to believe and receive the words he was going to speak to them and that he was speaking to them in that moment. And if they took those words to heart, it would give them the peace they need to live through the entire reality of what was about to unfold in each one of their lives. The, the calling and the assignment the Lord was giving to them and the opposition they were going to experience. And that if they held on to the promises of Jesus, that it would give them the strength that they need no matter what the circumstance. So again, two key passages there. John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. That's a decision, right? Jesus saying, don't let it happen because the devil's going to try to trouble your heart and fill you with fear. So you back away from what God's going to do and you run to find protection and do what you can to find safety. Right? John 16, these things, John 16, 33, these things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. So listen to the words, read that whole section of John's gospel as we keep making our way toward Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the reality of Christ's victory over the powers of sin and death. And if we take these words, imagine, or put yourself in a position, he's speaking to you. And if you take these words into your heart, you will have peace in him. And I will too. So let's help each other do that. He goes on and said, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. The world intimidates, the world threatens, the world abuses, you know, the fallen world. And in this, we're going to die ultimately, right? And so Jesus can say, you can have hearts that are filled with good cheer, hearts that are filled with courage and confidence in God. 
Because the worst possible thing that could happen to you is for you to, to die, right? Everyone's afraid of, uh, of the power of death. They're afraid of the fear of, you know, they're, they're filled with fear regarding death. But Jesus said, I've already took care of it, right? He swallowed up death in victory. The new creation has begun. He, the new reality, nothing can stop Jesus. He's absolutely indestructible, right? And that his life is in you. So Jesus said, don't worry. But instead, focus not on the, the big troubles. I mean, you can see them. You, we need to... Uh, acknowledge him we need to have strategy and the lord's strategy of getting through them but he just doesn't want us to be afraid of him earlier today i was thinking about the great david and goliath story and here you know the armies of israel lined up against the philistines and you know i don't know 40 days or something like that straight a, a long time many days anyway uh goliath comes out into the field and he intimidates and he challenges the army of israel to send someone to come against them here's this giant of a guy and David, I won't go into all the detail, but young David, his older brothers were there. Some of his older brothers were there in the army. And the whole army described them this way. This is how the scripture described the condition and the heart of the army of Israel when Goliath came out with his intimidation and his threats. Verse 24 of 1 Samuel 17. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and they were much afraid. Now, probably pretty rational to look at a giant, someone you know, if you step out, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna kill you, he's gonna destroy you, you aren't gonna be able to beat him. And so what preoccupied the army of Israel was the sheer size of the enemy that they were facing. And here comes young David. Their hearts were troubled. But what you see in David you know, who also we see became the great king of Israel, but also he was a weak man too. And he failed. He failed in some big ways. But what he had is he had confidence in God. His confidence is in that the Lord would deliver. His strength was in the Lord. And he knew how great, how magnificent, how majestic and how unstoppable the God of Israel actually is. And just some of his lines, we know what happened right? King Goliath came out, spoke in, in intimidating ways to him. But uh, David stood before Goliath after having, you know, told King Saul, you know, gave David his armor to go out and fight. It was too much for David to handle. He said, no, that's, I don't need your armor to win this battle. And I love just this little interaction here between David and Goliath. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. That's pretty intimidating, right? Then David said to the Philistine, little David looked up at the giant. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and I will cut off your head. And he said, God will do it so that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. David wasn't worried about the size of the enemy because his heart was filled with the realization, the love, and the zeal for how great God is, right? That's an important thing for us to keep in mind, friends, because in times like this, the troubles in the nations, the, the wars, the rumors of wars, the troubles in the church, the division, the weakness of our politi pol political situation, our social situation, it's all shaking. And so just like seeing a giant like, Day like uh, Goliath, the first response, pretty logical. Uh, this is real trouble and it's genuinely difficult. But then we step back. And we remember everything is in the hands of our great and our loving and unstoppable, indestructible God. I was thinking as well, and I just want to end with this, friends. There's a lot we can learn from, you know, King David in the Psalms. Psalm 145. And let this be our disposition. Listen now to what David says in this Psalm, and he's singing about the greatness of God. And he talks about uh, what he does in relationship to the grace of God. He meditates on God's greatness. 
He blesses God. He speaks about God's greatness. And then he declares it to other people. It's a beautiful psalm. I will extol you, my God and King, and I will bless your name forever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall loud your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. Men shall proclaim the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. Friends, ask the Holy Spirit as you look and into God's word, you look at God's creation, the majesty of God. Remember how tiny and how small this planet is and this magnificent universe God has created. He is so great. He is so majestic. Ask the Holy Spirit. As you meditate and gaze on him, the Holy Spirit, remember, is the one given so that we can see the beauty of God, the majesty of God, the power of God, and have faith conviction. So at, when, you, when you begin to fear about the size of the enemy, make sure every day you're taking time to gaze not only into the word of God, but look at God's creation and who he is and meditate. And the Holy Spirit will help you. And then bless the Lord with your words out loud in your home. Right? In your prayer time, Lord, I bless you for your majesty. I bless you for your goodness, your, your overcoming power. I bless you for your promises that are absolutely faithful. And I thank you, Lord. I can bet my whole life on them. And I trust you, Lord. You know, no one is greater than you. The darkness is not greater than the light that's in God. Right? And then declare it. Speak it. I can't say, I can't tell you, friends, how important it is in a time like this when there's nothing but trouble coming out of people's mouths and fear and anxiety and worry. You were put on this planet at this time in the wisdom of your infinitely loving Father. He's got a plan and an assignment for you no matter where you are in life. And if you operate out of that heart that is not troubled, right, but a heart that's filled with the awareness of the greatness of God, and you speak it out, and you trust in him, he's going to fulfill his purposes in you. He's going to do something great in your life. He probably has, right? He's going to continue to do that no matter what the circumstance. Doesn't mean we're not going to live through hardship. These are not promises that say, well, nothing's ever going to happen to you that's difficult. We're not afraid of trial and suffering because the apostles remind us, and Jesus himself said, right? What did he say about being rejected? You know, being falsely accused? being treated unjustly. He said, leap for joy. Why? Because that persecution and trial, we stand up in loving witness to the truth. It's, it's God's glory that's come upon us. He'll glorify himself in us. That's just so amazing. But friends, let's work every day in the little environments, God, the friendships and the relationships to, to live out of the gaze at the greatness and the beauty of God. And let that be our declaration. Let that be the blessing that comes out of our mouths as we bless God and we bless others. Again, just want to tell you about the free booklet. You can get it on our website. Let's continue to pray for each other. All those who are listening to this, say a little prayer for everybody who's listening. Because if we follow in the, in the promises of the Lord and the words of God, we obey him in this and receive the grace he wants to give us, we are going to be a light in the midst of darkness. And we will be able to give glory to God. And then Jesus will, will tell the Father of that you know, great reality when we go home to him. He's going to say, Father, Peter's home or Linda's home or Mary's home. And look what they've done in the little ways in their life. They believed me and they followed my word. God bless you, friends.